Today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The fiberglass gurus at Wildfire Marine build custom hatch lids for the Bertram 25 project. So once we get these painted up, we'll put them on the seats and uh, mount the seats on the boat. And then the only thing we have left to do will be to non-skid the floor. The experts at TRB install a new jack plate and fresh power on the custom skimmer skiff. So now that we got uh, basically all the wire in and everything rigged up, uh, the last step is to put on the jack plate and the mercury. George Labonte joins Bobby Woodard aboard his custom 25-foot Parker. After fishing the boat for a few years, Bobby realized this was going to be the perfect boat for his business, and it was time to give her the TLC that she deserved. A new passion project is introduced at TRB Customs, an old Stamus bound for a serious overhaul. I'm really excited about this project. It's going to be sort of our dream boat. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dream Boat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Here at Wildfire, we're, we're still working on Dave Taylor's 25-foot Bertram uh, I.O. conversion. We went ahead and built all of the seats that we had mocked up. Uh, Dave came up with some sizes that he wanted. And so we made our temporary molds and built uh, four seats for it. I went ahead and did all my finish work on them and got those all painted. But now we need to make all the lids for the seats. They're two odd sizes, so I went ahead and laid up a couple pieces of uh, angle aluminum with, with foil facing on them uh, on our Formica table. We just have some curbs that we use. We cover the, the aluminum tubing with uh, air conditioning tape, the, the foil tape. Uh, it works very good when you put wax on that. The pieces pop off nice and clean. Uh, and we just measure those to the sizes that we need. And then some divider pieces that I just cut, regular piece of marine plywood. Uh, scrap plywood that we have and put a piece of tape on those and position those. Make sure everything is nice and square when we, before we lay it up. Uh, and then we just go ahead and put a uh, filler around the edges before we put our gel coat in. Uh, I use a glazing putty and I just go ahead and spread them through all the corners and, and up any of the side corners that we have. One good thing with the glazing putty is it, it dries really fast. As soon as I get done with all my curbs, I go right in and mix my gel coat. Once I get the, the gel coat all painted out, um, the gel coat takes a while to dry, even in, even in this kind of heat. So we have to go ahead and let them sit for a while to make sure we don't get any blisters or bubbles. Now the gel coat's dry, uh, we'll go ahead and lay these up. I'll paint the entire piece with, with resin before I put any fiberglass in it. Uh, if you wet it just from the outside, there's a good chance sometimes it can be dry layup on the inside. And you might lay up a really nice piece but the entire face of the gel coat could peel right off because it's not doesn't have good adhesion. Our first two layers will be ounce and a half matte. Uh, and the reason we do that is because it adheres very well. We can wrap, we can push it in the corners really deep. It'll also take up any imperfections uh, from brushing the gel coat. Then I go ahead and resin the backside as well. I know for sure that that piece of fiberglass is saturated. And then I put my next layer on. It's going on a wet piece of fiberglass. I wet the backside again. After that, we transition into the 1708 Biax, and that we use because it's, it adds a lot of strength. If I put my glass down with the shiny side down, I get a good adhesion there, and it leaves the rough side up, which will get, give me good adhesion to my core. And then we go ahead and wet the core as well, uh, so that when those two get together, there's, there's plenty of resin between the two, uh, and that gives us a chance to go ahead and get our last piece on without having to wait and weight it down and then wait and then have to go back after it dries and, and add the final layer. This way we can get them all done in one piece, one time. After laying up the one hatch, uh, we went ahead and laid up the second one, which is basically identical. We do the exact same thing. Because we use that smooth uh, Formica and we use a, a mold release wax on everything before we, before we lay these up, uh, they come apart very easy. and slide a wooden wedge up and it pops right off the table. They're already glass smooth, so you basically just have to do some shaping and if 
if there's a little imperfection here and there or a pinhole, you take care of that. But other than that, these parts are ready for a final sanding and then, and then paint. So once we get these painted up, we'll put them on the seats and uh, mount the seats on the boat. And then the only thing we have left to do will be to non-skid the floor um, once we have everything set. When we return, the techs at TRB install a brand new jack plate and engine on the Skimmer Skiff project. This segment brought to you by LumaShore, the most trusted name in marine LED lighting. LumaShore. We offer the brightest, most beautiful, high-performance marine LED lighting systems in the world, both above and below water. Allow yourself to have the ultimate onboard lighting experience at your fingertips. Whether you boat for pleasure, sport, or adventure, be sure to choose LumaShore for all your lighting needs. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as the TRB technicians show proper jack plate installation technique while rigging the custom skimmer skiff. Hi, I'm Tate Beitler, and I'm here at uh, Two Rivers Boat Works, and I am the rigger for all of our custom skiffs. I've been here for about three months now. Could not complain one bit. One of the best crews to work for, and we get a lot of work done here. So today we're going to be talking about our skimmer skiff, which is one of the custom lines that we like to do. This one is definitely one of my prides of joy. Uh, it's one of the first boats that I've done with them, and uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Definitely a really nice boat. So yeah, so now that we got uh, basically all the wire ran and everything rigged up, uh, the last step is to put on the jack plate and the mercury. So to start out with mounting your jack plate and motor, you really want to find your center line. You want to be directly in the center of that boat. And so what we like to do when we start off is we'll tape off the whole transom. That way we can mark it up with a Sharpie and make all the marks and not scratch up the transom. And then we want to go in and we take measurements going across the whole transom from top to bottom just to make sure that we get you know each correct measurement and that way we're dead center. Now we got our measurement and we'll mark our center line. Now we'll take our straight edge and follow our center line straight down the middle. We like to do it one time and one time only. And that's the reason why we like to uh, tape it up and take as many measurements as we can and get a pristine fit. Once we get that, we'll bring a plate over that is kind of a universal plate for hanging jack plates and motors. And uh, we're able to set that on there. And it's got these two little diamonds in it that are right in the middle of it that once your center line matches up with those, you know that you're pretty well centered with the boat. And if you do not, you know, your motor's gonna be off, the boat's not gonna run right, turning's gonna be off, everything's just, nothing's gonna work as supposed to. Whenever you're gonna go drill your holes, you wanna make sure that your drill bit is straight. You can't have any angle to your drill bit at all. Each hole on that plate has a lip that comes out about a half inch for whenever you're drilling the hole with your drill bit. Uh, if you're any angle, anything, it hits that plate and uh, let you correct yourself. So now that we got our holes drilled, we can uh, pull off our plate, pull our tape, and begin to dry fit. So what we're doing now is a quick dry fit just to make sure everything is, fits nice and snug and level uh, before we put the 5200 on. And everything's looking good, so we're gonna pull it off and get ready for the final steps. So now that we're done with our dry fit and we know we have the right hardware and everything's aligned, it's time to actually bolt this on. One, you want to get your sealant. Know you have your sealant ready. And uh, basically, you want to feed your top two bolts in. Got to make sure you get every edge, both sides of the screw. That way you get a complete seal. You don't have to worry about any leaks. So we're putting grease on these threads. And what it does is it stops the nut from galling on the bolt when you tighten it down. So now that we have our jack plate on and all of our bolts nice and snug, we'll go through, we'll clean up all the excess 5200 off the transom and off the jack plate. And uh, that's our final step and it's time to hang the motor. So now me and Brian will be uh, installing a 60R Mercury onto this 16 foot skimmer skiff. Should be a simple install and it's gonna let this boat run. So now that we have the motor next to the jack plate and ready to hang, 
One of the first steps that we'll do is uh, we'll get a battery, we'll hook the motor up, and we'll adjust the trim. That way we're nice and level with the jack plate and all of our holes will line up nice and flat. Once that is achieved and we're flat with the jack plate, we now can insert all of our bolts and all our hardware and tighten it down. Same thing like when you put the jack plate on, except without the 5200. Load them up with grease on all the threads, that way all of our nuts will come off easily in the years coming and uh, we'll snug it home. So now that all of our hardware is in and our motor is mounted uh, and all our bolts are nice and snug and everything's home, it's ready to go to finish up all the rigging on the rest of the boat and get it ready for a sea trial. When we come back, George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Bobby Woodard aboard his customized 25-foot Parker in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Armstrong. Experience the Armstrong Advantage. Do you have the Armstrong Advantage? In its most basic form, an Armstrong outboard bracket improves the efficiency of your outboard motor. This equates to a faster time to plane and higher top speeds. The list of advantages continue with improved maneuverability, added space, and a quieter ride. Adding a swim platform accompanied by an Armstrong boarding ladder will certainly add to your day out on the water. Isn't it time for you to gain the Armstrong Advantage? Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. For a fishing guide, whether you're buying a new boat, building a boat, or rebuilding an older boat, there are certain things that you need to take into consideration when you look at the way the boat needs to be laid out. Certain factors on a boat and certain features on a boat are going to affect the outcome of your day, they're going to affect your customer's comfort, and they're also going to affect the fishability on a boat. Nowhere is that more evident when you're doing a rebuild on a boat like the boat we're going to look at today. Today we meet up with Bobby Woodard and Anna, his first mate and better half, in Boca Grande, Florida to take a look at his 1991 25-foot Parker, which he tailor built just specifically to suit his needs as a guide in Boca Grande. So, so I, I found the boat on Craigslist. Uh, it was originally for sale with an engine uh, for, for a price quite a bit more than what I wanted to pay. But I saved it and uh, kept monitoring it and uh, got to a price I could, I could work with and uh, told my girlfriend I was going to buy it. And she said, do not buy it. If you bring it home, you need to take it somewhere else. But as any good partner would do, I bought it anyways. And uh, drove to Chalmette. Guy opened the, the, the gates for the, for the back, back fence and uh, the boat was huge, way bigger than I had anticipated. Almost turned around and left, but figured I had made the investment to drive out there. So uh, as I crawled around and, and started looking at it and I could, I could picture in my mind what potential it had and what I could turn it into, how it could uh, work for, for my business, my clients, my personal use, and uh, decided to make him a cash offer. He accepted and um, started home. After getting the Parker home, Bobby surprised his girlfriend Anna with a new boat and began making plans to build this boat for his charter business. I <laughs> started doing my research, made a parts list, uh, made a plan for what accessories I wanted on the boat, mounted the motor, rigged the motor, and, uh, and fished it pretty much that way. Pretty much, I mean, as is, you know, as I bought it, other than those few things, for the first two years to really get a feel for the boat and make sure it was worth the time and the effort and the money to, to turn it into my, my dream boat. The first trip I ran on this boat, I knew five minutes from leaving the ramp that this was the boat for me. After fishing the boat for a few years, Bobby realized this was gonna be the perfect boat for his business, and it was time to give her the TLC that she deserved. Once we decided to keep the boat, uh, we wanted to make it look pretty. It, it was supposed to just be an exterior paint job to, to freshen it up, make it look better for clients. Quickly morphed, as most projects do. We found a small, a small rotten spot in the, in the front deck, so we cut it out. We patched the forward third of the deck um, new floor in the deck, new paint throughout. Moving back, um, I put a coffin box in front of the console. We needed some extra dry storage and extra seating and it makes a great fishing platform for my clients. They can sit on it comfortably and fish off the side of the boat. I took out the original console that came with the boat, found for a hundred bucks, again bargain finds on Craigslist, found a console over in Titusville for, uh, it's actually a plug for a console mold. Uh, but I knew I could you know, get handy and make it work. 
Uh, it had an uh, insulated uh, seat on the front of it used for a small cooler or live well. I uh, cut that off, fiberglass back in the front, flush so the, the coffin box could slide up you know, tight against that. Added a T-top, had to do some, again, customization to the T-top. It was a true bargain find. My best friend that helped me with this project gave it to me. We you know, trimmed up the legs and added you know, new legs and made it fit the console. And then I uh, took it upon myself, I did a, um, a coating on it. Uh, it's called a Raptor Liner, it's a DIY truck bed coating. So for power on this boat, uh, it's actually a Yamaha F250 four stroke, uh, model year 2013. I've owned it since day one. It's actually the, the, the motor that was on my old boat, my 24C Pro. So I was a little skeptical putting that motor on such a large heavy hull, but I'm thrilled with the performance. Uh, this is not a fast speed hull anyways. It's a, you know, it's a work boat, it's a charter boat. Uh, it's efficient, still gets roughly about three miles a gallon. It's plenty of power, good hole shot, decent top end. Maintenance is what matters on, on, on boats and motors and anything. So you take care of it and it'll last you. This boat works great for what I do and how I do it. Uh, for such a large vessel, it runs surprisingly shallow, gets plenty shallow enough for, for what I need. It's, it's super wide, it has a nine and a half foot beam. And uh, so it's super stable at rest. And I do a lot of drift fishing. Nice high sides, lots of freeboard, and it runs smooth and a chop. It does, it checks the list. I mean, no boat's gonna be 100%, but if you can get 95, you're doing great. And I'm there and absolutely love it. After spending a couple of hours drifting in the past with Bobby, it became clear to me that this was exactly the boat that he needed for his tarpon guiding business. And this was a perfect platform. I'm sure it worked out exactly as he had planned. After an initial investment of $5,000, and spending $20,000 on repairs and custom modifications. The cost of Bobby's dream boat comes to a total of $25,000. When we return, Dale at TRB introduces a new project for the TRB Customs crew. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate outboard motor. Go to SuzukiMarine.com to find a dealer near you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as the TRB crew gets to work on a stainless 290 tarpon that's destined for a serious overhaul. At Two Rivers Boatworks, we finally got to the point where we can tackle one of our own projects, a stainless 290 tarpon. The big thing with this boat was that we got it at, at, at a relatively good price and we were just gonna buy it, do some work on it, flip it and move it along. But um, my wife Kristen and I went down to Homestead uh, to collect the boat from the salvage yard. And while we were towing this boat back to um, Stuart, I said to Kristen, you know what, I really like this boat. We both love scuba diving. I enjoy fishing, Kristen not so much. So we wanted to build a boat that accommodates both of us. But sort of business life got in the way of personal projects. While Kristen and I have been growing this business, we've put an awful amount of hours into the business. We've, we've sacrificed an incredible amount of you know, personal time and fun time. And the whole idea behind building the Stamus for us is it's going to give us an opportunity to go and have some fun. And this year we kind of got to the position where the business is starting to take care of itself. So we decided, well, it was time to go and get the Stamus out of storage. We had it stored at a friend's yard. And what happened when we had to go and collect the boat was at first I thought I could just send a couple of guys down to, to hook the boat up and tow it back here. They went off and I got a phone call and said, mm, we're not going to be able to bring the boat across. So I said, why? They said, well, we started moving the trailer and the springs just bust right there and then. So I said to the guys, well, don't worry about it. Come back. Um, 
We'll grab one of our good trailers and get the yard arms, lift the boat up. So we packed everything up and we went across to the yard to collect the boat. And when I got there, the boat was, it was looking a little sad, a lot of Florida green growth, I call it. It's like you see old houses and cars and that they sort of just have this green slimy stuff on it. We had to move the old rusted trailer out from underneath the boat to put our trailer under the boat so we could bring it back to the shop. It, it was definitely a little nerve wracking picking this boat up, but you know, the, the, the guys know what they're doing and it, it really wasn't such a big deal. And sort of within half an hour, 45 minutes, we were out of there. In the morning, we moved the boat across and um, the big cleanup started. We got in, cleaned all the leaves out, uh, there were a ton of leaves, and there were bits of broken fittings and buckets of screws and old batteries and all that. So we made sure we got those out and we discarded them safely. And then we started the pressure washing process. And the boat started coming out really, really clean. And I was actually surprised at how easily we were able to clean the boat. So we got the boat clean, and the next day I planned to put the transom bracket on. The whole idea was that, you know, because we want to use the boat as like our personal dive boat, is that we would have a big platform back there to, to stage and get ready for, for our dives, you know, getting up out of the water, getting into the water. So it was important that we get that done. But when we started, getting ready to put the transom bracket on. We saw that it was actually about an inch below the bottom of the boat. And that's when I remembered that originally I wanted the transom bracket to be the same height as the back of the boat. So it, it would be one level. And that's when I remembered that we had to grind all that glass away at the back, get in from underneath, glass that up, so that we could pull the bracket level with that, the whole platform full in that well at the back so we didn't get to put the the bracket on that day but i think it's important that people realize that not everything goes as planned you know so it's exciting and you know it's uh we've got a bunch of stuff for the boat and we'll just see where it goes you know it's uh, it's going to be one of these things that i think it's really going to grow and turn into an awesome project it's going to be sort of our dream boat Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The fabrication experts at Birds All Marine design and install a custom leaning post backrest on a classic 20-foot sea craft. George Labonte joins Josh Whitaker aboard his tricked out 22 offshore. The fiberglass masters at Wildfire Marine demonstrate properly repairing damaged gel coat. And the TRB Customs crew finalizes and splashes their latest custom skiff project.